as I just pray over this evening and um, what we're going to talk about here. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we just come before you and we just thank you um, for the day that you've given us today, Lord, that you've given us breath in our lungs. Lord, that is a mercy on us. Lord, it's not something we deserve, um, but it's a mercy you've given us and it's, and it's a chance to follow you and to know you today, um, to receive the life that only you can give us, Lord. Um, so we just thank you for that. We thank you for your son, Lord. Um, we thank you that he went to the cross for us, that we could be free in you, Lord, um, free from every sin, free from the bondage of our former lives, Lord. Um, just bless these guys. Um, work, it, work in their hearts and their minds the way only you can. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 So guys, um, you know, like I said, a lot of times we're doing step work. Some, sometimes we have testimonies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about myself, um, a little bit about my story. Um, and I'm going to talk about the Bible a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of Bible, a little bit of this, a little dip and dab, as Pastor Ryan always says. So, um, so is that okay with you guys? That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. I was going to do it whether you said okay or not. Yeah, so, yeah. Was, uh, um, anyway, yeah. So, so John um, introduced me a little bit. I know most of you guys at this point. Well, I know a good half of you guys. Some of you other guys I, I haven't met or spent as much time with. Uh, but I'm Pastor Donnie, like John said. Um, uh, some of you guys at 59 know me as the guy that plays dodgeball with a bunch of kids in your backyard all the time for some reason, so we're back there doing that. Um, uh, like John said, um, John's got to be there um, for a lot of the a lot of the things that God um, has done in my life um, and has done with this ministry in general. Um, and God wants to do an incredible work in your life. Um, it's more than just getting free from drugs and alcohol. It's, it's about what God's will is for your life, what he wants to do with, with you. Um, and I just want to let you know that because I want to tell you a little bit about me. Um, some of you know my background, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Um, I don't have the guys that know me already. I, I don't have the same addiction background exactly as, as, uh, the rest of us here. Um, but what I do know is that I have a sin background, like all of us here. All of us have a background in sin, right? Mm -hmm. I was definitely a sinner, okay? I'm definitely just a sinner saved by grace, and that's, that's the only thing I can ever boast in, is the, the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ that he's had in my life. Um, but I want to start off with that because that's important, because I think, you know, we can, we can think of addiction, or we can think of this sin, or we can think of another sin as a separate kind of class and a separate kind of people. We're different than other people. And, and the truth of the matter is we're all slaves to our sinful desires. We all, it doesn't, doesn't have to be alcohol. It doesn't have to be drugs. It doesn't have to be substances. We're all slaves. That's what the Bible says. Um, you know, addiction is just a branch on the tree of the main problem in all of our lives. And that's sin. That's that it's because we rebel in our hearts we rebel against God because we're sinners. Um, that's what scripture reveals to us. So I'm going to talk about scripture a little bit this morning. If you have, uh, this morning, that's, I'm used to Sunday mornings, this evening. Um, if you've got a Bible with you, can you, uh, can you flip with me? We're going to do it discipleship style. We're going to pull up or open our Bible if you have one with you. You might not. There's also Bibles in that, that box if you want to open it up with me, but um, it may not be enough. But if not, I'm going to read for us, so it'll be okay. Um, but Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 21. So you can put a finger in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 21. So I know some of you might, you know, you might not follow the words of the Bible. I don't know where every single person here is tonight. Um, they might not look to, the, to Scripture um, for how we live our life. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Um, some of you might not follow the words of the Bible. That might not be where you're at. But I'm going to talk about the words of Scripture because this is what's cha changed my life. And I know that the Word of God is what has um, life-giving power. Uh, it has the power to transform your heart and your mind and everything about you. Um, Jesus said in John chapter 8, he said, If you abide in my word... This word that we have, the Bible, uh, you are my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. 
This is only the truth that can set us free in our lives. That's why I want you guys to know and the truth is in this word. Um, so I'm going to look at it tonight. Um, so, yeah, a little bit about me, man. Um, I, uh, you know, I want to start off by saying that, you know, the Bible doesn't say we have this special problem called addiction. Okay. It says in Romans chapter six, verse 16, it says, you are slaves to the one whom you obey either of sin, which leads to death or obedience, which leads to righteousness. That's what the Bible says about the condition of man's heart. That's what's wrong with us. Just like everybody else, we're slaves to the one we obey. Either sin that leads to death or fate or obedience which leads to righteousness. So we all live under what's it? Okay. <laughs> Not the first time. Um, we all live under either the slavery of sin or we live in the slavery of obedience to God. But we're all going to live under one thing or the other. Uh, and the lie that we tell ourselves all the time, this is the biggest lie that we, we tell ourselves uh, as we walk and live, is that we are in control. Hmm. That I'm in control of my life. Um, the biggest lie is to think that we, we can go and we can um, run our own program, right? We can run our own program. We're either slaves to sin or we're slaves to following God. That was actually a lie from the beginning, right? With Adam and Eve. You guys know the story? in the Garden of Eden, they can, God said, you can eat from any, any tree. You can, you can pick any fruit that you like, not but not this one. And if you eat from this one, you're going to die. And Satan comes along, he comes, the serpent comes along, and he tells the woman, hey, uh, actually, if you eat from this tree, you're actually, did God actually say you're going to die? Actually, if you eat from this tree, you're going to become like God himself. So you want to be like God himself. Yeah, ego. We want to choose for ourselves. We want to be in control. But the Bible says we can't be. We're either slaves to sin or slaves to righteousness. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. So um, the way I grew up, um, I grew up in a good home. Uh, I'm not going to tell you some sob story about some terrible home I, I grew up in. I had good parents that loved me. Um, some of you know them. Um, they're, they're good people. Um, but I did grow up in a, I, I grew up a Christian but he grew up in a church uh, that, for lack of better words, it was a cult. And there was a lot of evil things that happened there. A lot of things that turned me off to church, to uh, the idea that God even does anything good for the people that follow him. Um, the pastor of this church um, all along had been taking all, all of the money uh, he was manipulating my family, manipulated a lot of people uh, to give really all of their money. He abused people sexually, children, all sorts of things, all sorts of awful things. Um, and he did a lot of emotional um, and physical damage to everybody's life there and to, to my family's. Um, and one day it came out, everything that was going on, and... It was over like that. And, and this church had everything to do with our lives. We, you know, you know, everything in my life, my family's life revolved around this church. All our friends were there. Um, I lived in Wilmington at the time, but I didn't know anybody in Wilmington because this church was in Concordville. I spent 100% of my time up in Concordville, up in Delco, because this church demanded everything from you. And one day it was gone and I just had nothing. And it left me empty. It left me with like a lot of questions about God. Why would God do this? to my family. Um, it left my, my parents without any money, um, with a lot of struggles, always on the brink of foreclosure, all the, all these things. Um, and then my mom got sick. Um, and she wasn't around for years and all of a sudden, like everything in my life was, was just gone. And I had a lot of questions about God, a lot of questions about his goodness. Um, and that was a tough thing in my life. Uh, and I, I, I really struggled with those things until I came to the realization that all those things that pastor was, all, those, uh, all the things that he did to me, to my family, all the, the evil things that happened there was, was because of sin. And it's the same kind of sin that lived in me. And I knew that. And I knew 
I needed to be forgiven for my sin. Just the way he needed to be forgiven. Um, and I gave my life, I would say I gave my life, I asked Jesus to be my savior uh, when I was 17 years old. Um, but there was a lot of things that happened between that time and me really following God and following his plan for my life. Um, so I want to read for us here in Ephesians chapter 5, here verse 15 through 21. It says here in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, the Apostle Paul writes, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. And therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and making melody in your heart to the Lord, and giving thanks always for all things. See, um, this is what God wants for us, right? God wants us to walk circumspectly. If you don't know what that word means, circumspectly means to walk carefully, to avoid risks, to measure each step, okay? To pay attention to the way you're living your life and how you're living and what, you, what desires that you're feeding and uh, the places you're going, the things that you're doing. Okay, we know this about God. Um, of course, you can't, be, you can't be drunk, right? You can't be out of you know, the faculties of your own mind and walk circumspectly. You can't do that, right? Um, God wants us to measure each step. He also wants us to make the best use of a time, it says, Paul says here, because the days are evil. That means we live in a world that's evil. We live in a world um, where there's a real devil. I don't know where you guys are at with that right now, but I want to tell you that the devil is real and he's really the enemy of, of man. And he's really uh, in this world and he, and he lies to us constantly. He lies to us through the things we see on TV, the things, the people, the lies that we hear from other people, the things that we hear in our heart, our evil desires. Um, he's working in this world. This wor we live in a real world um, that's evil and he wants to consume you entirely. He wants to take everything about you, everything that God created that was good and destroy it all. He wants to consume it all. And in this verse, it also says this. It says that God wants us to understand what the will of the Lord is. And that herein lies a lot of the heart of the problem. <coughs> we make it about a lot of different things. We make it about, um, you know, we think all of our problems are maybe just alcohol and drugs, or maybe it's, maybe we have a gambling addiction, maybe it's sexual addiction. Uh, I know for me, I struggled a lot in that area. Um, but the big problem in my life was any of those things that's, that, I didn't understand what the will of the Lord was and I didn't follow it and I, I didn't really care to know it. Um, that was the problem in my life. I didn't come to God, um, even though I, I would say I, I believed in Jesus, even though I'd say that I gave my life to him, I didn't come to God and ask God, what's your will for my life? I didn't come to God and say, God, here's my life. He was my savior. I want him to forgive me of my sin, but I didn't really want him to be the Lord of my life. I didn't want him to be my master. I wanted to do my own thing for a while. Um, and, uh, and so in, in high school, um, uh, in high school, I, I was into, I don't know if anybody's into it. I was into like hardcore music, heavy, heavy metal. You know, I was into that stuff. Yeah, all, all that stuff, going, going to shows, uh, getting punched in the face, things like that. You know, that was for, that was for fun. Um, and... Uh, I was really found, you know, I think when I look back at it, it was like, because I didn't find an identity in God, I, I had to find it somewhere, and I really, and I, I felt lost in life. I didn't, you know, I felt like I didn't have an identity in my family. I didn't have, uh, everything that used to be my identity growing up was gone, and I was looking for one. Um, and I found it kind of in that music, in that music scene, going to shows, doing things like that. And I, I started writing music, um, with a friend of mine, we started recording a few songs. Um, some of them started catching on. We, we, we put stuff on SoundCloud. I don't know. Is SoundCloud still a thing? I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, SoundCloud. Uh, and some of it was starting to catch on locally, and we, we started playing shows. 
um, we got a whole band together. We started playing shows, and I really immersed myself in that uh, the music scene, like the underground music scene, um, and that became my identity. And all, all you know, people paid attention to me that never used to pay attention to me. Nobody paid attention to me in high school. No, no girls ever paid attention to me in high school. I'll tell you that. Um, uh, but they were now, and and that just became my identity. That's what I was living for. Um, I never felt anything like that. Um, and, uh, I was, I was in college at the time and we were playing, starting to play shows all the time. Um, and still that thing was true that I had asked God to be my savior. I asked Jesus to be my savior, but I, but he wasn't the Lord of my life. I was running my own program. I was doing my own thing. Um, I was looking for satisfaction here. Um, I was looking for purpose, meaning here. And, um, I was in college. I actually ended up dropping out of college uh, to go play in this band because it was just taking over my life. Yeah, it made my mom and dad real proud with that one. Um, and uh, the more and more success I had with the band, we're going playing shows, going out state, um, doing all these things. Um, the more my personal life got more out of control. Um, you know, crossing lines that I said I would never cross, right? When the, all those lines, they said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to have my fun, but I'm not going to do this thing. Uh, you crossed it. And I was trying to manage living the life I wanted in my relationship with God, okay? And over and over, I tried to, to live, you know, over and over, I tried to, to live for God. I tried to do the right thing. I was, trying not, I was trying not to do the wrong thing. I wasn't trying to do the right thing. I was trying not to do what was wrong. Um, while I was having my fun, you know, and, uh, over and over I tried, but I would, I would fall down over and over again, find myself hanging with the same people, doing the same things at the same parties, you know, um, I was binge drinking, I was partying, you know, doing all that stuff. Um, and I would say in my mind, I would say, you know, I got time, you know, I got time to figure it out. You ever say to yourself, I got time to figure this out. I'll figure this one out tomorrow, you know. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna I'm gonna sort the stuff out. But right now, um, you know, I got this bottle. I've got you know, I'm at this party. I'm with this girl. I got something, you know. I got something going on. Um, see, the devil will do whatever he can do he can do to convince you that you can deal later, and you can put off with dealing with the deep matters of the soul. That's what he's always trying to do in your life. He's trying to convince you that you got time uh, and you got tomorrow. So the Bible says none of us know if we have tomorrow. Um, the Bible says don't say you're going to do this or that and make uh, go into this town and go make this trade um, for what if tomorrow never comes. Instead, say if the Lord wills. That's what the Bible says. If the Lord wills, we'll do this. Um, we don't know if we have that time. And the biggest lie that Satan tells you is that you are in control, like I said before. And that's not true. Um, you're not just having your fun, but we are slaves to our sin. The Word of God says today, if you hear His voice, if you hear the voice of God today, do not harden your heart as in rebellion. So, so many times I heard the voice of God and I just ran the, the other direction because I wasn't ready. Um, the reality is because I love my sin. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for him to be my master. I was just ready. I just wanted him to be my savior. And that was the problem in my life. Um, I thought I was going to have my fun while I was young. And, and um, you know, the more and more I would walk and, and more and more I got into this, this underground music culture and, and all the things that were happening, I was doing all the same things uh, that everybody else was doing, you know, crossing the lines that I already drew for myself. Um, and I started to really look at my life and look, look at it in a realistic way and, and realize, you ever get to that point in your life where you realize, well, I'm not in control anymore, you know? This is, I'm not doing the things that one part of me wants to do, I'm, I'm doing. I'd want to do these things, but there's a part of me that doesn't want to do this and I'm not in control anymore. I think we all get to that place at a certain point. Um, I was doing all sorts of things. I, I think... That was a big thing in my life um, was uh, I was so angry. I was, I was genuinely a deeply angry person. 
And a lot of you guys that know me now probably have a hard time believing that you know me as you know the nice one. John's the mean one. I'm the nice one, right? Oh, uh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, that I was a deeply angry person at the time, and uh, my anger um, uh, got me into so many things. I, I started just getting into to, to fights all the time, just brawling all the time. Um, Bible talks about brawlers, um, and yeah, you're looking at me like you don't believe me. <laughs> uh, bro- broken nose, broken hands, broken teeth, all, all sorts of things. You know, from from fighting in my life. Um, but in particular, I remember, um, there was one time, um, I was so driven by anger. Um, and me and some guy had, a, had a beef, you know, I'll spare you all, all the details of that one, you know, cause we don't have that much time, but, um, I didn't like this dude. Um, you know, we talked our trash and, um, I was like, well, you know, let's meet, let's meet up, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, I come out, try to fight this kid. He wasn't there. And I was just, I just had it in me. I'm like, I'm going to fight this kid. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And it was fighting for me became like a high. It was like something I was addicted to. It was like, um, it was just like a release of all this anger that I had pent up in my life. Um, and you know, I would, you know, I'll go online and talk to him and call him out and I would go and he wouldn't be there again. And it was going on for a while. And, um, I remember this one time I was like, I came up with like this plot that I'm going to get this kid to come out um, because I knew this girl that he was into and I was like I'm gonna get this girl to go to his house you know and I'm gonna get him out that way and I did this whole thing and I you know looking back I'm like how how did I come up with this evil plot like what was wrong with me I was like so sick inside Um, and I remember um, I got this girl she went and knocked on on the door I don't remember what she said to him and he came out and I was just waiting for him outside and I grabbed him and I remember him looking at him and he was just scared. He, he was obviously didn't want to fight. He wasn't a great dude, but he, he was obviously just a broken person, just like me, you know? And I remember just looking at him and I, I just let him go. And I don't remember what happened right after that. I, I remember leaving and I remember going home and just thinking about like, what has happened to me, you know? How did I get to this point? You know, and I think we all have that, that point that we get to, um, anger was just in control. Um, and there's a lot of things that, that kind of transpired in my life. But at one point, um, I remember being at a party and I just got blackout drunk. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of things I did a lot of fool. I'm not going to get into it all, but I did a lot of foolish things that made me really look stupid that really left a stain on my life. Um, when I was going around telling people that I was a believer in Jesus Christ, I, you know, that I was, you know, I was saved. I was, I, I lived for him and my life didn't show that at all. And I, and I looked at my life and it was, I realized it was so out of control and, um, I knew the power of sin there and, Um, I had just had this moment with God kind of waking up from the stupor, waking up at that party in somebody's house. I didn't even know who they were and having this conversation with God. And I knew that I never asked God, what do you want from my life? What, what, what should I do to follow you? So that was the problem. The biggest problem wasn't just that I was, I was doing sinful things or I had vices. The problem is that I wasn't near God. I wasn't living for him at all. Um, so you read it, what it says here in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. See, Paul tells us something that I think we're pretty aware of, that we shouldn't be drunk with wine. He doesn't want us to be drunkards. He doesn't want us to be um, people living without the faculties of our own mind, without the, a sober mind. He doesn't want to live. He, he doesn't want us to live as addicts. You know, getting high, not knowing what we're doing. It's pretty obvious. Um, but the problem is that, you know, that we have is that we don't just have an alcohol or drug problem. We have that sin problem that I'm talking about. Um, and maybe you know, with the right accountability and totally cutting yourself off from drugs and alcohol 
um, and all substances and getting away from all the people you used to hang out with and uh, handing over your credit card to somebody. Maybe they'll, they'll keep you sober for a time. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that it, deep down in our hearts, we're all slaves to sin. Unless you're obedient to God, and you're, unless you're obedient to his will, uh, unless you come to know him, you're going to be a slave to your sin no matter what. Maybe you, you don't have that sin. Maybe you can get past drugs and alcohol and you can make your life more manageable. You know, But we're still slaves to that sin. Um, and what I was doing, I was trying to manage my life without the power and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we try to do that. We try to manage our vices and we try to have that manageable life. Um, and the problem with that, the problem with that is that there's so many people with what seems like a manageable life on the outside um, that on the inside are slaves to that sin. Okay, on the outside they look like their life is manageable. There's a lot of people with nice jobs, with nice cars, with you know families and all these things that have these manageable looking lives uh, that are on their way to spending an eternity away from God, eternity separated from God. They're on their way to judgment. And I tell discipleship guys, you, you guys in discipleship that are here, you know, I, I tell this to you guys, you hear it all the time. But what I, what I say is that, you know, if, it, if you have to go through the low, the low, low lows of addiction and the desperation and the sickness of addiction, um, if going through that causes you to come to a genuine repentance and it brings you to a point of genuinely crying out to God, uh, then it's worth it. Because it's, it's far better um, to, to do that and to get to that point than it is to live what looks like a manageable life and then face God at the end of your life without his mercy, without his grace. That's, that's the truth. That's what I want to tell you tonight. Um, Jesus says, what good is it for a man that it, uh, to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? And so if you come to the end of your, your rope and addiction and you, you burn bridges and you do all these things, it's a better thing than coming to the end of your life without repentance and without coming to know God and his power and his love and his ability to transform your life. The ability to make you truly free, to know the truth and to be set free, like Jesus said. God wants to save you. He wants to transform you. And he, wants to, he wants to transform your heart, soul, and mind completely. He doesn't, he doesn't just want to get you to stop drinking anymore. Or stop, you know, shooting dope anymore. He wants to do more than that. He doesn't want you just to stop doing bad stuff. He wants you to live your life in service to him. Your life in uh, for his pleasure. Okay? Um, that's impossible to do. And this is what I want us to understand. It's impossible to do without the Holy Spirit in your life, without the power of God in your life. Um, I want you to understand something, guys. Um, this, is the, this, is, this is of the utmost importance. You know, Paul's saying here, hey, don't get drunk with wine, you know, because it's a waste, uh, but be filled with the Spirit. He's not saying don't get drunk with wine anymore, don't use anymore, uh, don't be an addict anymore because it's bad and it's making your life unmanageable, although it is, right? But he's saying something more than that. He's saying that everything we've ever looked for in alcohol, everything we've ever looked for in drugs, anything we ever looked for, uh, any satisfaction that we look for in any kind of sin is truly found in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If you live for him, you can come to know that power. It, he's saying that all those things like drugs, alcohol, okay, all those things are temporary and uh, counterfeits of the true contentment, the true joy, the true peace, um, that drunkenness and all those things claim to bring us, that promise to bring us, that feel like they bring us for a moment, but then it goes away and you feel worse than you ever did before. Um, the real fulfillment of all the things that we're looking for in those things is found in God's will for your life. It comes in his presence and his work, you know, his spirit at work in your life. And since then, man, my, my, my life, um, God's taken me on a journey since that moment where uh, God confronted me and said, hey, you're not, you're not doing what I asked you to do. 
you're running your own program here. And he, he said something to me, and, and you maybe I'm not, I didn't hear an audible voice, and maybe you think this sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, this is what he impressed on me. He said, either follow me or don't, but don't give me what's left over. See, God wants your whole heart. And my life is, is you know, God's taken me on a journey of things that I couldn't have imagined for myself uh, if I wanted to. John, you know, talked about um, some of my story in more recent times and in, in ministry and, and things like that. Um, man, if you told me I, I was going to be a pastor uh, back then, I would have been, I would have said, you're crazy. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not going to be a pastor. Um, I didn't want to be a pastor. You know, it wasn't, wasn't that, oh, I couldn't be a pastor. I didn't want to be a pastor. Nothing, nothing about me wanted to be a pastor. <laughs> nothing wanted, about me wanted to do ministry. But the transformative work that God can do in your life he doesn't just free you from addiction, but he's going to take you on a journey in your life. He's going to do things uh, that you couldn't even dream of for yourself. And I don't just mean that he's going to do these things. You know, he's going to give you the, the, the things that you've always dreamed of um, uh, when you're dreaming of things in your sinful flesh. But he's going to do stuff in your life for his own purpose. He's going to turn you into the person that he's designed you to be. You know, and he's done that in my life. But it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's only by his transformative power. And so my purpose, you know, when I come in and talk to you guys about these things, you know, is that I don't, I don't want to just see you uh, temporarily not on drugs, temporarily not addicted to alcohol. But I want to see your lives transformed by the power of God. He has the power to do that. And so... Um, Maybe you don't, you know, maybe you don't know about that power at all. Maybe you, you, you don't know God like that. Um, and I want to give you an opportunity to, to know him. Uh, if it's a, it's a simple thing. Maybe you don't know. I don't even know how to approach God in that way. Um, but I'm going to pray, pray for us. Um, and then I'm going to open it up the, to discussion a little bit. But if you don't know God and you, and you want that power in your life and you, you just feel like you're stuck over and over and over again, in the same cycle of just trying to do the right thing, but finding yourself weak to do the right thing. God offers you that power to transform you completely, to take you on a journey where one day you won't even be thinking about drugs and alcohol anymore. You're, you're going to be thinking about what, what does God have next for me? You know, he has the power to do that in your life. So if you don't know that and you want, you want to know that I'm just going to pray and you know, I don't need anybody to say anything, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to bow my head, close my eyes, but I'm going to pray a prayer. If you, you can pray it silently in your heart. If you, if you want to, if you want to know God's power to transform your life, you can do that with me. Um, so I'm going to pray. Um, and then I'm going to open it up to all you guys, open it up to the floor. So, um, if you just pray with me, um, I'm going to pray a prayer for us. So dear heavenly father, we just thank you Lord, um, for, um, the freedom that you give, uh, to those that just simply will trust in you uh, and just say, Lord, forgive me. I want to follow you, Lord. Um, I just want to pray a prayer for anybody that doesn't know you um, that you can just repeat in your heart um, after what I'm praying, Lord. Um, Lord, I, I, just, uh, I just acknowledge that I'm a sinner, Lord. We acknowledge that we're sinners. We, we know that we're weak against the powers of the flesh and the powers, the desires of our own heart, Lord. Lord, I, I need your forgiveness, Lord. Lord, and I want your power um, to live for you, Lord. Um, I want the, the power to live. I want the, your life, your joy. I want all the things that you promised us that we looked for in our addiction. We looked for in other places, Lord. Um, Lord, uh, forgive me um, and help me to live for you. Um, we just pray this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Amen.